Welcome back folks, MTG Joe here, and we are wrapping up our budget build series. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, what we do here is play three variations of a deck, a budget version with 10 or less rares and with mythic wild cards, a mid-budget between 10 and 20, and then a non-budget version, which is like a fully tuned version. The deck we've been playing is Racto Sacrifice. Um, so this is the non-budget version. Uh, if you want to catch either the budget version or the mid-budget version, those will both be available on YouTube uh, shortly, or if not already up, depending when you're catching this. Um, so they'll be all uploaded together. Uh, once I'm done this as well, I'll do a quick write-up at aetherhub.com, just explaining some of my choices, stuff like that, in the budget versions. Uh, this is pretty much the list that's been going around MTGO 5 lists. So it's kind of the tier 1, 1 1.5 of the deck. So of note with this deck here, what we're adding in, I'm going to highlight those uh, and then kind of go through that. Um, really what we're doing is just truing up some of our numbers here and then fixing up our mana base. Um, we're adding in three Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. Uh, so this really helps us for the grindier games. Uh, what it allows us to do is uh, attack the opponent's hand. It's a fast clock to once it gets escaped to close out the game. And um, it lets us use our graveyard. So if it's in grind your matchup, stuff's dying, stuff like that, we can escape it back and get value that way there. Um, we went up to four Woe Striders, so just another escape threat. Uh, works well with the sacrifice. Mire Triton and Tyramet really play well with Karaxa, so that's another strategy there. And then really what we're doing is just adding in Temple of Malice and then a couple Castle Lockwain for the more grind your matchups. We saw a lot of games in the budget versions where we just needed card draw, and that kind of helps, so just more escape threats. Sideboard's the same, everything else is the same, so we're going to jump into it. Uh, I just went on a really bad streak in rank. I was playing some Historic while the other video was uh, going, so we're going to play traditional standard ranked. We're going to play Rakto Sacrifice. Let's choose the right version, and uh, we'll jump into this. Um, so as always, if you do enjoy the content, want to show your support, the easiest way is if you can, drop a like, subscribe, or comment on YouTube or a follow on Twitch. All those methods, free, easy, and it helps out a lot. Um, and if there is any decks you'd be interested in seeing, do let me know. Second land, this hand's gas. I think we, okay, I'll keep this. Uh, cats aren't the best in multiples, they're better with ovens. This is another month where I've just been going like weird laddering. I'll win like five in a row and then lose five in a row. It's just always quite annoying. So we drew another black source there. I think we just hide the fact we're on red. So Sequencing wise, I should have led with the oven first and then the familiar because if they had a bounce spell, which was unlikely that they'd be playing unsummon. Okay, so it looks like blue white control generally is a pretty decent matchup just because we're pretty aggressive and then we can get around their removal into fairy bounce. That's actually very good. Let's just start drawing starting next turn. If we can like escape a Croxa now. I'll just pass the turn here. So we got a pretty decent clock starting next turn. I could just draw cards if we don't draw action. Opponent's mana base is a little off. It's most likely blue-white, which haven't seen as much blue-white recently. Most of them have shifted to the mid-ramp de deck. Um, I'm going to play the mountain here. Uh, just because if we draw into Croxa, we want to be able to escape it later. Let's see what they do here. This is an old version if they're playing Thirst for Meaning. So the nice thing here too, we can be pretty aggressive with this castle. Our life total is a resource in this matchup. They're not going to kill us all in one shot. And they can, so Teferi, if, if they play it, they can bounce the oven, which is the smart play. Okay, 
Let me go Malides. We'll give him a blocker. Sorry, what do they discard? Conquer's death. And then we'll just draw a card here as well. So I'm probably not going to commit the priest to the board right now. It just opens us up to a board wipe unnecessarily. Hey Max, how's it going? Thanks for swinging by. Where are you, uh, where are you tuning in from? So the one good thing is their shatter here gets rid of their blocker and then I could just come back so it was wise not to play priest there. Uh, we'll draw another card here. Okay, second oven really just speeds things up here. Uh, my day's not bad. We uh, played some magic, cleaned the house a bit, still stuck on house quarantine. <laughs> so can't go grocery shopping, can't do anything. But uh, my house is immaculately clean. How about yours? Okay, sweet. Took down mono white, or uh, blue white. They really didn't do anything that game. So this is a remorse in matchup. Um, Farika's liberation. And I think that's actually post board. They probably bring in the um, Pegasus. So claim of the firstborn really doesn't do much in this matchup. Priest is okay, but not great. So I'm going to cut down to one priest. I think we go like that. Priest really isn't good against like board wipes. They're not really going to be sacking too much. So I'm just going to opt to not play that. Thinking if we just cut the priest, you know, I'm going to cut the priest all together. Like it is an answer to, uh, to dream trawler. Um, but it's not like the best, best. Uh, we got red cap. Yeah, I think we do that. Yeah, I was streaming today like around 1-ish or so. Uh, in the morning we were dealing with some stuff around the house. Mm -hmm. Do a great job of drawing no landers. Usually on the weekends... Are you kidding me? So I think... I think we so grasp for Teferi if they have it. I think we do this. Fetch on one. Yeah, usually weekends I'll stream usually Saturday morning or before noon if I can get some time. If not, um Oh, they missed their line drop uh, sometime in the afternoon. Weekdays here and there, like in the evening, most likely the time. I think we just go Meyer Triton because it puts a clock on them. And if I draw an untapped source, then I can play both. If not, we probably just Croxa. Ooh, that's interesting. Mm. I don't think Mayhem Devil's where we want to be right now. 
So I'm just going to play Croxa. If we get another land, then we can escape it next turn. Actually, no, we can't. We're short. So, oh, this Esper. They were just missing everything. Let's see what's going on here. So they have Birth. They have Devout Decree. They have Banishing Light, Omen of the Sea. I think we just get rid of Trawler. It's like the one card we can't beat. A single land kind of opens up their hand. It's a very awkward land indeed for them. Um, so they're probably going to do that. They can Oath Kaya there. This lets me get Croxa down earlier, but I think we just do... Yeah, let's do this. Uh, we're playing Rakdo Sacrifice. So we we're doing what's uh, like a budget build series. So earlier today I played two like budget versions, like a 10 rare version, then a 20 rare version, and this is the fully tuned one. Okay, so they birth the Milites. Uh, I'm gonna decline here. I want to keep my Croxa. Uh, Um, so there's a couple options here. So Croxa forces them to sacrifice. Mayhem Devil, because they're going to be able to devote Decree next turn or that. So they both of these exile, which I'm not very interested in the exile, so I think we just play this out. See how it goes. If we can get like an oven. Okay, so they go arc in here. So I think we just do that. So with the oven, I can deal some down. We can just go face here. Just drain them out this way. So if they block here, Then I sack this and they take the damage anyways, so they're dead. Uh, which uh, legendary were you talking about? Nyx Lotus? Or. So this one here, we're really just trying to sacrifice our stuff for value. So what we do here, we can sack Mayhem Devil. They don't gain the life. They take, yeah, they're still dead. Oh, Croxa? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just playing around with Croxa because they had exile effects in hand, so I didn't want them to get the exile. All right, one to know with the list. Taking down a very weird Esper. We got the goose. Uh, I'm just going to give Arena a quick reset, and we'll fire up another game. So really what we're trying to do with this deck um, is just demo the fully tuned version. Uh, I think this is a, one of the better aggro decks. Uh, the mono-red matchup's a little interesting. Uh, you can shoot down a lot of their early things, but they tend to have more targeted removal, so it's a little bit harder for you to get your priest off, I find. Um, but when you have like Cat Oven, it's a good blocker. They do have Ember Cleave, so it's 
usually a race in that case there. Um, but against the more traditional removal spells, the adventure decks are a little difficult from the bounce, um, but you can kind of stifle their adventure cast by sacking your creatures. Uh, keep this hand. One too many lands, but next turn I'll just Malice. we can, so this is likely fires, Ooh. getting Kroxa there is great, so even with this I can shock in, so here I'm going to attack in first in case they have like a bone crusher giant. So even if they sweep here, I have Midnight Reaper to refill my hand. This looks like a stomp perhaps, yeah. Don't have enough for Croxa yet. So I think this turn I just go Midnight Reaper, that's interesting, yeah I think I want that. I'm going to poke in for two here, if they want to trade they can, if they trade. That might mean they have Clarion. Still think that's good for us. The Clarion here, I draw two cards. Okay, so they go fires. Brazen Borrower. It's a pretty lackluster turn. So. I think I just want to set up a priest. If they had a board wipe, they would have board wiped. And then if anything, it just fills for Croxa. So again, this protects us. If they do have a wipe, if the Brazen Borrower doesn't block, we can steal some of their... Okay, so we can't steal that. We'll have enough cards in our graveyard that we'll be able to do it. Okay, so double cavalier. Out of any of the five drops, that's probably the best one for us to be seeing. Um, what do I want to sack? So I sack those two, draws me some cards. I think we just gotta put pressure on their life total. Shuffle that back in. Yeah, so we have the sack too. So it was the 1-1. One, one. It was just between Mayhem Devil and Cavalier. I think we just escaped Croxa here. Oh, no, no, not Cat. Keep Cat in the yard. So this forces another card out of their hand, potentially dealing 3 damage. Okay, so they... Been a surplus fires. Don't want lands. Want them to play it like a brazen borrower or something, just so I can sack. 
these claims aren't that good in this matchup. Do they just have double Clarion? Honestly, if their turn's just double Clarion, it's probably okay for us. Gain five, Brazen. Ah, that's bad. So let's force a card out of their hand. Let's go Meyer Triton. Okay, so we got a Woe Strider. So I have enough to get Croxa back and give it haste with claim. Kenrith's probably the end of this. That's going to give him Trample. Yeah. They're going to gain the life there. So in this matchup, Epic Downfall, Agonizing Remorse. The Noxious Grasp aren't as good. Probably... Farika's Liberation. Get rid of the claims here. Priest Tyrmarek could also come out, I think. Doesn't really do much for us. Question is about the priests. If we want those in. I think on the play we keep the priests in. We might have been premature with the sack on the, the priest to get rid of our Midnight Reaper because it gave us cards, but we wanted to limit them drawing into Kenrith. So we'll play out the land here. Not crazy about Double Priest. Does play this into a Clarion a little worse. The fact this deck's got so many sweepers, it's kind of annoying. And this being the kind of the older version with Brazen Borrower. So we're good for lands. I'm gonna play out the priest. I'm only gonna attack with one. If they try to sweep, at least I can draw a card. Okay, so they don't have white mana. So same idea, keep one back to draw a card. They could just fires and sweep this turn as well. So that costs them a life. Okay, so they have the fires, see what they do here. Okay, so they have Clarion. So we got two points of damage here. Because we drew another Mayhem Devil. I think we just wait on fetching here keep that open just to deal some more damage okay so now we're gonna do it uh probably
probably want another red source in case we draw Croxa. We can escape it. So I'm really excited to get Kenrith and Red Cavalier combo killed. This matchup feels awful. So I'm doing this, I can get the cat back, and then that lets me start dealing damage that way. Wow, they don't have another effect. What's their hand? Is it just like six mana stuff? So the nice thing with fires is you don't need to worry about the instant speed. So sack, 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 sack. So sacrifice it takes a damage. Sacrifice the food takes damage. Sacrifice it takes a damage. Sacrifice the food, it takes a damage. So it's only four, so I have to wait. <clears throat> So no blocks here. I think I had lethal if I did this in response to them casting Kenrith. Think we're still okay. Just from like the ETB triggers. But I think I missed. I don't think we can play Priest in this matchup. Yeah, they see it. So I'm gonna take Priest out. It seems like more of a liability. Um so Priest out. Play Timorettes. Then maybe just Noxious Grasps or Dragon Fires. So Dragon Fires Exile, which is okay. I can use it in combination with Cat. Noxious Grasp gets rid of Teferi and Kenrith only. This seems a little bit more flexible. So I think we just do this. Priest just requires too much commitment. I think with like Clarion, especially with them on the play, they're gonna be able to sweep. So hopefully draw an untap source. If we can draw that, then we're pretty good. We can deal with their first big thing too. I'm not as worried about the Sphinx of Foresight as I am with like a Kenrith or a Cavalier. So double top bottom. All right, have a good one, man. Thanks for stopping by. It's very good with our board, but I think we need mana. Mind you, we have a couple plays. I think we just do this. So obviously untap land would have been much better, just these playing really poorly with each other. I'm going to lead on oven, because if they have a like removal spell, then it's not as good. Okay, so no Teferi is also nice. So I'm going to force a card out of their hand with Kroxa. Okay, Red Cavaliers, nice to see that gone away. That also plays around like Aethergust if we try to go. Okay, 
Okay, so fires into probably this. So we'll just drain them with some damage here. This is a sorcery spell. So I actually just think we do this and say go, because if they clary on here, then they don't get, like this dies as well, because I sack it in response. That does give them a scry, but they're keeping it on top anyways. You could think all you want, opponent. Okay, so glad we kept the epic downfall. See what they do in response here. So they can give haste and then they could either draw a card or gain some life. Interesting that they didn't do that prior hand. Doesn't matter, we're gonna block and sack. Hey Quantum. Uh, yeah, so I've been streaming for most of the afternoon. We've been, I did a full budget build series today, so this is the third video. Uh, this is probably gonna be my last match. Uh, we're down 1-0 right now. See what they do here at the Kenrith. How, how you been? Surprised they didn't decide to draw the card just in case. Okay, so they go Clarion here. So I think I'm actually going to do this. So I lose my cat but I get to deal a damage to that. And then this gets swept up too. I was really hoping for a land there. So they draw a card. It's unlikely they whiff with two draws. Four cards in the grave. One of his a cat, one's that. So keep that on top. Bone Crusher me. Um, Timeret puts the most cards in the grave. I think we go this. Nice that you're back. Hopefully everything's good, you're safe. Um, I'm gonna exile Mayhem Devil. This lets me block and then uh, depending. Okay, so no haste is good. Sorry about that. I gotta take a look at what's wrong with my computer. I don't know if it's Arena or the computer, but it's been kind of glitchy lately. So just sack these through. Um, I'm gonna hold this back if we play out the Mayhem Devil. Uh, just get rid of the other Timerette. So that gives us another zombie. So I can get some sacks on it, which is pretty good. So I think what we do is just play this out and say go. Not hitting lands this game has really hurt us. They do get the scry, which they keep on top, which never bodes well for us. 
Yeah. It's probably lethal. So block like this, block like this. Bring back the cat. So it's one sack trigger, put it on this. Two sack triggers. Another sack trigger. Just put more damage on the opponent here. So not terrible. Still not the best. I'm just gonna go Mire Trade in here because it has Death Touch. Okay, we found another cat, so that's decent because we can get two blockers going now. Ah, that's the worst draw that they could have had. That's going to give them trample and lifelink, so it's going to deal a lot to us. Literally any other draw on their deck would have been fine. I think what we need to do here so if we block and block like this they could pump it twice so that gives it that's 11 13 15 yeah so we're actually okay this turn we don't just die Okay, so they opt to gain life here. I'm just going to take the damage here. Just not drawing lands has really hurt us this game. Okay. So I can Croxa back. I can also Mire Tridens. Which, to be honest, I think we just Mire Trade in this turn. Gains us life. Keeps us alive. And then that way I don't have to trade the Croxa. We're obviously bad if they draw a Flyer. Bodes well. Likely a land or another fires. Something that they want to ditch, but we're going to croc side out of their hands. Could be Aether Gust as well if they brought that in, which it looks like they did in the previous game. I do like how it's just we have this other hand down here. Okay, that draws us cards, but I think the plan's just Croxa, get cards out of their hand. That deals some more damage to them.
Okay, yeah. Was Aether Gust? Just gonna hold back here. Like, I could poke in for two, but I don't think it fundamentally changes the math. They still can't attack in here. And then I can force some damage through with Kroxa. Yeah, sick. Got there. Ooh, that one was one to navigate. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this one up. We went 2-0 with the deck. Took down Esper and Jeskai Fires. Um, so this will wrap up the budget build series. I'll have the article up on Aether Hub. If you do enjoy the content, as always, do drop a like, subscribe, or comment on YouTube, or a follow on Twitch. Appreciate those who stopped by. Otherwise, have a great one and stay safe.